Okay? AP Calculus AB, finding the slope of a graph implicitly. Like, the first thing I want to say about finding the slope of a graph implicitly is that on most exams and most, or most universities are not going to tell you that this is implicit differentiation. They're just going to say determine the slope of the graph, and you're going to have to recognize that it's an implicit function. So this function is implicit, and I hope that you can see that. And, and all I'm going to say is this. Here we're, going to, we're asked to, f to determine the slope of, this, of the graph of this. This is called a lambda skate. It looks like kind of a figure 8 uh, that goes between quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. So this is what that function looks like. And it's not a function. What's this equation looks like a little bit. And it does. So we're going to try to do this. So as I look at this, what I'm going to say first off is I recognize this is an implicit differentiation. I'm going to declare to you now that I intend to take ddx, the derivative of this whole thing. So I'm going to do this part by part. So I'm going to look at the, the right-hand side as if it's its own equation, if you don't mind, and I'm going to look at the left-hand side as if it's its own equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to take uh, dy dx of this, and hopefully you can see that this is a chain rule problem. So I'm going to start the chain rule, which is f prime at g of x times g prime at x. So what that means is we're going to take the derivative of the outside. The derivative of the outside is 2 times 3, which is 6, right? We leave the inside function here alone for now, right? And then we decrement the exponent here by 1, so 2 minus 1 is just 1. And then, we, so this is our f prime at g of x. Now we have to take our g prime at x. g prime at x is the derivative of the inside piece. And then the derivative of the inside piece, well, we know the derivative of the d dx of x squared is 2x, right? But what's the derivative of, of 2y? Of y squared. Well, it's 2y because that's the derivative of the outside part. And again, we're looking at this as if it was a chain rule problem, right? So I'm looking at this this way. I'm like, okay, the inside function is just this y piece right here. So I'm asking now, what is the derivative of the inside? What is the derivative of y? Well, the derivative of y is, well, the derivative of y, which is dy dx, isn't it? Okay, and is equal to, and is equal to and I'm going to take the derivative d, excuse me, d dx of this side also of 100xy. And I'm going to go and do that in just a second. But first, I'm going to do this. And I guess what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, what am I going to do here? Okay, I am going to factor out, yeah, I'm going to factor out these twos from here. And that would give me. 2 times 6 is 12, so 12x 12 squared plus y squared times x plus, I'm sorry, 2x plus 2y, right? x plus 2, no, just x, sorry, just x plus y. So here's my x plus y here, right? x plus y dy dx, right? Is equal to this mess over here. So I'm going to start working on this, and I'm just going to, I'm going to multiply this through and get 12x squared plus 12y squared times x plus y, x plus y dy dx, right, is it still equal to the, to the ddx of 100xy. I haven't even started working on that side yet, and that's why I was telling you this thing kind of blows up. And when you do this math, you're going to get this, you're going to get 12 cubed plus 12xy squared plus 12x squared y dy dx dy dx all right plus 12y cubed dy dx holy macaroni look at that crap is <laughs> Oh my God, I know it's just a mess, but that's where we get to, and this is the problem. Look, if you're wondering what I did, all I did here was FOIL, and you should really stop, and you might be going, holy crap, I don't really want to know this much. You do, because the more you see it, the better you get at it, and that's kind of where I am. So I'm going to take the derivative, I'm going to take this piece out here, this 100, take this thing out, if you don't mind, right, as a constant multiplier, and I'm going to take the derivative of x times y, and the derivative of x times y using the product rule is 
dx dy dx plus y. And if you're wondering how I got that, I just made this list here and said that f of x is equal to x, f prime at x would be equal to 1, g of x would be equal to y, right? g prime at x is equal to dy dx, right? Sorry, you guys, sorry. Right? dx here. And then I put this together, right? It's it's f of x times g prime at x, so f of x is x, g prime at x is dy dx, then it's g of x, right, times f prime at x, so this is y times 1, so that's that crap right there, isn't it? Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to here, and I want to see if you can see this with me. I'm going to do this. This is what threw everybody off. My God, just killed everybody. I'm going to factor by grouping. Factor by grouping. So look, I'm just looking at this. It's this plus this. And if you look here, we have 12x cubed here. We have 12x's here. There's no factors of y on this. So I'm just going to factor out 12x, right? And, of course, 12x times x squared is 12x cubed. 12x times y squared is gives me this, doesn't it? And here, if you look, we have a y and we have a dy dx, and we have 12. So I'm here, I'm going to factor out 12y dy dx, dy dx, right? And then if you multiply this back in, what would you multiply it by? Here, you'd multiply it by x squared, wouldn't you? And remember, we factored out a factor of y, so here, plus y squared, wouldn't we? Is equal to, now I'm going to distribute this crap in. So we're going to get 100 x dy dx plus 100 y. And, and if you're still with me, you are a saint and God bless you for it. But this is what I'm looking at now. Finally, I'm getting to what I really care about is that I want to get everything with dy dx on one side. So look, I have dy dx over here and I have dy dx over here. So I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to subtract. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract this from, from here. So see if you can follow this math a little bit. This piece right here, I'm just going to rewrite it as 12y dy dx times x squared plus y squared. Right? So, so far, so good, I think. Minus 100 x dy dx, right? Then I'm going to move all of these things. These are the things I wanted to keep on the other side. So I'm going to subtract this. So this, this piece right here is this one. Negative 12x, x squared plus y squared, right? Plus 100 y. Can you see that? All right, then hopefully what you can see is is this. You know what I'm going to do just so you can see this better is I'm going to move this dy dx to over here, dy. You know I'll leave it where it was and hopefully you'll be able to figure it out. dy dx here. But look, this has a term of dy dx. This has a term of dy dx, doesn't it? So I'm going to factor out this term. So I'm going to factor out dy dx. I'm going to leave all the other stuff in green the way it was. So there's the 12y. So 12y times x squared plus y squared, right? Minus 100x, right? Is equal to negative 12x times x squared plus y squared plus 100y. <clears throat> and this is looking miserable, but you guys, we're almost done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide both sides by this piece, right? Remember, the goal is to get dy dx by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by this. So as I do that, we're going to get our dy dx back. And here's our dy dx all by itself. Remember, if I divide this by itself, I'll just get 1, won't I? So I'm going to rewrite this piece here, negative 12x 
x squared plus y squared plus 100y all over, and remember I divided by this, so I just get 12y x squared plus y squared minus 100x, right? And that works out perfectly. So, now what you would do, and you're going to kill me for saying it, we wanted to know what is the slope of this graph at the point, and the point that we wanted was the point 3, 1. So this is what you have to do now, and it is miserable. But what you have to do now here is, right, plug in 3 for every x, and 1 for every y. And the answer that you will finally get is actually 13 over 9. I'm not going to bore you and make you hear my voice anymore, but that's the answer that you'll get. So implicit differentiation, this was a, a miserable problem, and I'm sorry for ever showing it to you, but my gosh, if you can do this one, you can do all of them, so good work.